Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. And today I want to talk a little bit about Tyler Linderbaum. Uh, draft season is, is here and there was a lot of talk about him being a pick the Ravens needed last year. And I really just wanted to take a look back at his rookie season and kind of see how it panned out. You see the PFF grades on the, the screen. Before we get into it, let's run the intro. All right, before we get to the film portion of it, let's do a little housekeeping things. If you like the video, like this video, hit the subscribe button and also click the bell so you can be notified when these videos drop throughout the rest of the 2023 draft season and the 2023 season. But let's get into Tyler Linderbaum, his PFF grades, and then eventually to his film. Um, I pulled the, the four best grades of, you know, from PFF and whether you like how they grade or not, you know, it's some of it's kind of wonky, but they're, they're good for, for information, for information. So I pulled his four best grades, the four best ones being Pittsburgh week 14, Cincinnati week 18, Cleveland week 15 and New Orleans week nine. Uh, he had a yearly grade of 74.6 based off their grading scale. But the, the numbers at the bottom are the ones that you can kind of go back and measure. Like you can go back and look at film and kind of find these. So I, I think they hold a little bit more weight than the actual grade unless you understand how they grade, which I don't. You know, I used to crap on them, but, you know, I'm crapping on them no more because their their site has given me a lot of information that I've been using lately. Uh, gave up three sacks this year. Only three quarterback hits, 23 hurries, 29 pressures allowed. And that's not bad for a rookie. You know, especially if you got to deal with Haywood twice a year, DJ Reader twice a year, and I'm not sure who um, the Browns have in the middle that, that can, would deal with Linda Bond. But let's get into the film. And I got about five or six plays that I want to talk about, different types of plays and show you where he what he was good at and what I think he needed work at. And when the pick – first came out i knew he was a good outside zone inside zone dude i thought he would struggle in the gap schemes i thought he would struggle and pass pro when you put a zero right in front of him safe to say i was wrong in some of those areas but let, let's let's just let the film do the talking all right let's take a look at the film for tyler Linderbaum. i got one two three four six plays that i really want to talk about and uh, different things on different plays. Inside zone, outside zone, counter power, pass pro, and second level blocks. Um, let's get started right here. It's pass pro. And again, this is the situation where I thought he struggled. You got a zero on him and, you know, people were upset because of his arm length. But this is where I thought he would struggle if you get a powerful guy and just would bull rush him. That's not really the case. He did a good job. Now, there were some times, especially against DJ Reader, where DJ Reader just kind of overpowered him. But for the most part, he was able to hold his own. Like in, in this case, um, with Hayward doing the, the stunt, he takes on the initial like, little, little slap from 99, realizes it's a stunt, passes it off to Powers, and then picks up Hayward. Now, where when people would just straight up, like try to go up the field on him, straight up the field, let me make that bigger, sorry. All right. Go straight up the field on him. That's when I thought he would struggle. And for the most part, he had some struggles, but not as much as I thought he would. So he did a better job in that area of his game that I than I expected. Getting the second level. Does a great job at that. Look at that. Just look at it. The double with Ben Powers. Look, great leverage. Great leverage. Allows Powers to come in and try to take over it. And when he when he feels Powers kind of push him off, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You are supposed to leave automatically. The guy you're doubling with, should his momentum should kind of force you off. And you see, I don't know if you can see it, but you see Powers' arm right there kind of pushing him off. So that's going to push him right off to Devin Bush. And look, what, look at the hole that it opens up. Bam. That's perfection. 
I don't know how much football, you know, O-line play that y'all like, but that's perfection. An O-line coach would, would go nuts if he saw this. You see what J.K. does with it. I'm excited to see this cat 100% healthy too. Excited. His vision was different once he came back last year. Next play. Double teams. And again, you just saw double team the last play with, with Ben Cleveland. This one again with Ben Cleveland. Just look at and hold his own. Now, this is nothing spectacular. And it's tough to kind of double a, a zero, especially because you don't know which way he's going. So he takes his step and kind of he kind of puts his foot up and puts it back in the same spot because you don't really know where the, the D tackle's going. He could be slanting this way, could be slanting this way. You really all you can do is pick this foot up right here and put it back down and then react to whatever he's doing. So he pounds it, realizes that he's kind of holding on. Cleveland kind of helps him out. So now you just got to stay with your leverage. Stay with your leverage. I mean, Cleveland don't do a good job, don't do a bad job of getting second level two on this. But holding his own. But again, the reason this is on here because his strength was in question. There was a question about his strength. This is holding his own. Now, this is not Hayward, but still. Holding his own in there. Get about a six, seven yard gain, which is good in the run game. I'll, I'll take six, seven yard gains all day. Back blocks. Now this is sometimes he have an issue with this because he got a he got a back block all the way over here. He got to get all the way down that line and and, and Haywood sees it and Haywood's savvy enough that what he does is he's. He sees it coming and goes over top of it. But Lindenbaum has to know. He has to get, let me get this off. He got to get right on that 9-7 and not allow him to go over top. He got he to make, his angle has to be directly at that 9-7. That's whether Hayward takes a step up, takes a step back, or whatever. He got to come right at this number. And if he goes up, adjust. If he goes back, adjust. But he got to hit that spot. His aiming point is that shoulder right there. See, he allows the the defense tackle to kind of push him off, which kind of messes the whole thing up. And so now Hayward can kind of get over top of it. And you see Hayward climbing over the top of it now because he can't get the leverage he needs to keep him there. But he'll get better. You know, there's little tricks. There's, there's a bunch of little tricks that, that go on with O-line play that you don't really see in a broadcast booth or you just don't really notice because you focus on skill guys. And for a long time as a coach, I, I, I wasn't – keen on o-line play but once i got better at it and took like knew that in order to be an oc you got to understand it or to be a head coach you got to understand it and then i realized that that's the bread and butter of any team i started to love it and, and learn more about it yeah outside zone love it we already know he was good at outside zone and this is this is a thing of beauty the footwork the speed and short area. Look, look at him hold that hand back. He stuck his hand out there to help his guard. That's to help Cologne. So that helps Cologne, you know, because Cologne, you got to get a drop step. Let me bag it up. Outside zone. You got to try to get dip. Now, I don't like Cologne's step, but I love Linderbaum. Look at the difference. Look how Linderbaum gets depth on his step, his J step, on his left foot. Let me get this arrow out of here. Get out of here, arrow. You know what? Look at Linda Bum's J step. He got depth and width. Cologne basically just basically just turned his foot. That's not a good J step. But the fact that Linda Bum kept stuck that hand there, that helped Cologne get what he needed. Now Cologne needs to turn. If he can get to the midpoint. If he can get to the midpoint. But now, back to Linda Bum. He sees um 31, whoever that 51. And now it's about angles. It's about angles. Look at his angle. Look at that angle. The angle never wavers. Now he got him squared. The angle is so good he got him squared. If Gus, if Gus would just stick that foot in the ground right now and hit that, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. But Lindenbaum's footwork and angles are impeccable. Look at him squared up. Cover the guy up. If Gus had seen it a little bit earlier, it might have been more than what it was. He probably would have still had Minka to deal with back there, but still. 
Linda Bump on outside zone is is a thing of beauty. I actually pulled a play that my old head coach now coaches O line at another school, and I actually pulled one of Linda Bump plays and sent it to him and labeled it teach tape because Linda Bump got a lot of plays that you can teach young old linemen, you know, what to do on inside outside zone. And lastly, inside zone. Different step. See, now that with that step, you're just basically taking a 45 degree. This, this step is right there. Taking a 45 degree step. Not that J step that you, you did earlier because it's inside zone. Now you got instant leverage on the, on the zero. Instant leverage. Just get off. It's heading in the right spot. Now you just got to try to open it up. Look at him. Blow him off the ball. About three, four yards back. Just blow him off the ball. Now had had this double team worked out, they'd have had a better run, but it, it, it didn't work out. I don't know what they was doing, but we ain't talking about them today. Especially not Moses, Morgan Moses as a Hindo called the ops. <laughs> but with that being said, if if one of these two block him, they got to play because Ricard going to take care of that or should take care of that. But as far as Linderbaum, they can blow that guy off the ball. And then get him turned. Get him turned. So if, if, if not for 51 just sitting in the middle of that hole, that's a good play. It's a good play. Aside from the fumble. I don't even know if it counted as a fumble or whatnot. 